Hi, I'm Ross Mayfield, investment strategy analyst at Baird, and we are back for another weekly update with our friends at Strategus. Today, we are thrilled to be joined by managing director and head of fixed income research, Tom Tetsuris, to talk all things fixed income. But first, Tom, how are you doing this morning? Oh, I'm doing great, and thank you for having me on this morning. Thrilled to talk to you. Um, as we were just saying off mic, no shortage of things to talk about in the bond world. Uh, we had a Fed meeting uh, yesterday as we're recording, and 10-year treasuries are off to the races. So let's let's start with the Fed. What did you hear or see from them? And, and then maybe talk about what you think is driving this move higher in rates that we're seeing today. Yeah, well, the, the theme from the Fed yesterday was higher for, for longer. And that doesn't necessarily mean any more rate hikes to come. It just means that where we are today, the market should expect the Fed funds rate to be at this current level, if not higher, three months from now, six months from now, maybe even nine months from now. Another uh, point that came out of yesterday's Fed meeting was that more Fed voters, FOMC voters, saw less chance for rate cuts next year as well. So all of that suggests that intermediate term treasury yields, that is twos, threes, fives, even as far out as 10 year treasury yields should be lifting higher. And that's exactly what we saw yesterday. And we're seeing it again this morning today with 10 year treasury yields getting close to 450 uh, as of the moment, uh, as of the, the last check. Right. And so you mentioned that the Fed thinks that, you know, may maybe on, on balance, there's less chance of cuts next year. They revise their estimates for growth higher. So it would seem to think they're falling into the soft landing camp. But then by, you know, enforcing or keeping a higher for longer mantra, you kind of push the economy into more strain and more likely to have a recession. So I'm curious, you know, what, what do you how does what they did yesterday or what yields are doing today affect how you think about a recession in 2024? And then I think secondly, what are areas that you watch closely for signs of strain, whether it's credit spreads, the yield credit, you know, anything on, on the table, what are you watching closely as we head into 2024 for signs that a recession might be developing? Yeah, well, on the first question, um, I do think that the Fed is very reluctant to admit that the level of interest rates that we see today and the further tightening of financial conditions to come, they're reluctant to admit that this is going to very likely cause a recession. They're optimistic that they can deliver a soft landing. But I think if you look at Powell's comments, he said something on the order of yesterday of, well, it's our primary objective to deliver a soft landing, but we're not necessarily convinced that that's going to happen. I'm kind of paraphrasing. So I don't think the Fed is under any delusion that they can deliver a soft landing Certainly not if they continue to raise interest rates, but nonetheless, that is their ultimate goal. With that said, with interest rates where they are today, it's going to be really difficult for the Fed to deliver that soft landing because simply put, you're going to continue to see cracks emerging in the credit space, and you're also going to continue to see strain on small businesses and lower and middle income households who are very much affected by not only where the Fed funds rate is, but where credit card interest rates are. So all of that is going to continue to, to result in further drag on households and small businesses. So I don't think the Fed can deliver the soft landing. I don't think that they truly believe themselves that they can deliver a soft landing. But as of right now, that's exactly the path we're on. We're on the path towards a soft landing. And that's another reason why you're seeing treasury yields, intermediate term treasury yields rising, because the market does not necessarily believe that a recession is imminent. And so you're seeing yields pushing a little bit higher. Now, what in terms of cracks or canaries in the coal mine should we be watching? Well, you could make a very good argument that the, this economy is really being driven by consumption and it's being driven by leveraged consumption. That is consumption from borrowing. In past cycles, whenever that's happened, it's always ended in a recession. And the last time we saw one of these big uh, leverage driven consumption binges was when the housing market was booming in the early 2000s and that ended in a financial crisis. We don't think that's gonna happen this time around because it's not housing equity that's driving this consumption binge. It's actually credit card debt and personal loans and lower and middle income housing households spending more than they, they take in, but you're seeing employment in those households remain strong. So you have sort of a, a, a kind of chicken or egg type situation here where until job losses begin, consumption can theoretically run hot with debt growing. And theoretically, as long as consumption is growing and debt is growing, uh, employment in that area can also remain strong. So something 
has to break first, and we don't know exactly what it is, but one of the things we're watching is credit card delinquencies, auto loan delinquencies. Both of those are rising, albeit from very low levels, but they're rising and they're rising in a monotonic fashion. That is every month, they're a little bit higher and a little bit higher. So that tells us that eventually there is gonna be a pull of credit. That is lenders are gonna pull credit from your average American household and there's gonna be a pullback in consumption. Once that pullback in consumption happens, that's when you should start to see the labor market begin to wobble, which then should trigger a further pullback in consumption. But if there's a silver lining here, it's that unlike 2006 to 2009, where that pullback in consumption triggered a housing market collapse and a further escalation of aggregate demand collapse, we should not expect to see that right now because housing itself is not a primary driver of growth and consumption in this business cycle. So you should see a shallow recession. But when that recession hits is anybody's guess because at this point, households continue to spend and no one knows exactly how much runway they have, although we do see the cracks emerging there. Yeah, definitely still a lot of kind of uncertainty given that post-COVID environment, some excess savings and, and some just oddities in the labor market that aren't typical uh, for a cycle. So Tom, really good stuff. Really appreciate the stuff to watch, the insight on the Fed, and hopefully we'll get to talk to you again soon uh, to break it all down once more. Thank you. Thanks.